Well, praise the Lord, and good evening to everyone. This is Minister Robinson coming to you from the grace of God, only by his grace. Hallelujah, are we saved. I thank God this morning. Yeah, it's early in the morning. The Lord has laid this on my heart, and I'm just going to adjust the volume here to make sure that you guys can hear me. Sometimes uh, I'm told that my voice doesn't project, and uh, so I want to make sure that you're able to hear me. So we're going to put it all the way up to 100. All right, so let's run 100 this morning with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Whoa, got something good for you. Got something really good for you. And all good things come from the Lord. They come from the Lord. Hallelujah. So we acknowledge him in all of our ways this morning. And pray that this will set you free. This will set you free. It set me free. Hallelujah. And the word of God comes. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the liberty. And so we invite the Holy Ghost in this morning. We ask him to have his way, send his word, do what you will with it. And we ask you for more grace, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for the anointing of God. Hallelujah. To break yokes. Hallelujah. And bondages. Hallelujah. Under which we have placed ourselves. Because the Holy Ghost is free. Hallelujah. And there's freedom. So here we go. We're going to talk this morning with the help of the Lord from Matthew, the fifth chapter, in verse 33, verse 33, but we're going to go all the way down to verse 37. Let me read it, and then I'm going to share with you the thought that uh, in my heart. Here we are. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old. This relates to those who were under the law. This is Jesus speaking. All right. He says, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform your oaths, O A T H S, to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by Let me see here. Neither by heaven, okay, for it is God's throne. Not by the earth, for it's his footstool. You remember over in uh, the Psalms, you said in, in, in uh, one of the other Old Testament scriptures says, you know, his feet are on the earth. <laughs> That's the great big God that we serve. Now, that's imagery. Yes, it is. But he's everywhere. He's omnipotent. He's all over and all powerful and omnipresent. So he says he's in heaven. And the earth is his footstool. Mm -hmm. Nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. So God has showed them. We know God chose over in First Kings, God chose Jerusalem. Uh, that's his his city. That's his choice. City. This the world belongs to him. He can choose anything he wants to, but he chose Jerusalem. Hallelujah! So he said, "Not by the great city of Jerusalem, where he's king, the great king, nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make." One hair, white or black. But let your yes be yes and your no, no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. Nah. In other words, if you say, now what, what the Lord is explaining to us here is this. Uh, under the law, they say, do not make a vow unless you keep it. 
Don't don't swear. Because God is a God of his word. And unless we are inspired by God to say a thing or do a thing, hallelujah, the Bible says it comes from the evil one. That's the word of God. Unless God has called you to it and given you the grace to perform it. He said, don't swear. You can't swear by heaven that you're going to do it. You can't swear by the earth because that's his footstool. He's in charge there. He's in charge in heaven. And he said, even if you're in Jerusalem, you can't swear by the city of Jerusalem because that's his chosen city. That's his. It all belongs to him. And then he said, now this is where all of us <laughs> fit in. You can't change the hair on your head. You, you can't make it white or you can't make it black. Now you say that, okay, you can dye it, but if you have to dye it again. So you didn't make it. You tried to make it temporarily. But the scriptures say you can't you can't do this. See this gray? God gave this to me. Yeah, it's on the way to white. It used to be black. But I can't swear by this. But this is where we all have to come, Lord permit, that we must realize and grow up and mature. We can't do nothing. The Bible says if you try to do something else other than what God has inspired you to do or be or say, that it comes from the evil one. So that says to me that the evil one is inspiring people to do things that look like God. Mm hmm. And so they're doing it and thinking they're doing God. Mm hmm. But the scripture says, don't let it be, let your response be yea or nay. So I'm going to go here with this that even when God says to us, I want you to do this. Or you feel inspired to do that. If you say no. That is more honorable in the sight of God. Than saying yes and not doing it. Because he is a man of his word. And as his children he expects us to respond with a word that we're going to keep. Now, if you say no, God knows how to move your life in certain situations to help you to say yes to his will, not your will. Some of us have a strong will, but God knows how to break it. This is so revelatory because so often we think that we can do things we can't do nothing do you know we can't when when i worked in the hospitals uh, i worked there and i was able to go in and out of the patient's rooms uh we we had chapel on I think it was Wednesday evenings. Yes, I think it was Wednesday evenings. And the Lord used to show me why the people were sick. Mm -hmm. The men that had prostrate problems, 
felt free to talk to me. I was uh, a, a minister there, a chaplain, a hospital chaplain. And so they began to open up to me. I had one man who had prostate problems, and eventually he needed to talk about being an adulteress. That was so connected. That was so connected. But God opens your mind up. He said, we can't do anything. We think we can do things. People, humanity, the family, the people that God created, he's the creator, but we think that we are independent of the create, the one who made us. Impossible. Even, uh, now I'm going to go back a long ways. It used to be a, a, a creature called a monster that was created. This is uh, fiction, okay? But we used to watch it as children. Scared us, scared to, scared to bits. But we would sit there and that eerie music would come on. And Marcus would come out. And Marcus had cre he used to uh, deal with uh, dead people. Mm -hmm. And we would watch this. Oh, we'd be so afraid. But it was exciting. But Marcus created fictional this mo this monster out of this dead body. And Marcus could tell that dead body what to do. He would raise it up and talk to it and send it here and send it there. No, nah, that's fictional. But in the reality, if, if God has created us, has he not the right to tell us what to do? And the Bible says, Matthew 5, that anything else is of the evil one. Now, how many is living under that covering? How many of us are living under the understanding that it takes the grace of God to live pleasing in this life? Only God's grace. Only God's mercy. And we have to have the mercy of God because even after we understand that I can't do nothing on my own. If, hallelujah, we try to do something on our own until we learn, I can't do this, hallelujah, except God gives me the ability and the power to do it, to cause it to come to pass. So we have to have mercy. All those times we missed. Because it Bible says all the other things are of the evil one. All of the other things that we tried to do on our own. The Bible says it's inspired by the evil one. That's scripture. Glory to God. And so we must be led by the Spirit of God. And by the unction and the word of God to do anything. Listen, working in the hospital will show you some things. People can't go to the bathroom. And we take it for granted that we're able to go to the bathroom. But I'm going to tell you, almost every time I go, I'm thanking God because I've seen what can happen when you can't. Tubes and pipes everywhere. We can't breathe without him. Mm -mm. Seen people under oxygen tanks. In fact, I had a relative that was so addicted to cigarettes. He had his loved ones bringing him cigarettes and he was under an oxygen tank an oxygen tent so you know it's been a long time ago right 
because they don't do that anymore. No, no more tents. I haven't seen that in years. But of course, what I'm saying to you is that you, you're just bumping your head up against the wall and being inspired by the evil one. So unless you have the inspiration of God, this was revelatory you cannot do it it will not be successful you're not going to be faithful at doing it unless God said it and you said yes then he will give you the power to continue to do it to be faithful at it it's the grace of God that's why the scripture said we are saved by grace. Now that does not negate the other scriptures. <laughs> One scripture is uh, comparable to the other. We still need to be baptized in water in the holy name of Jesus. We still need the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That doesn't negate that I'm saved by grace because after I get saved, that's just initial process right there. That's initial to enter the kingdom of God. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. That's how you get in. Otherwise, God has nothing but mercy for you because you don't have the ability, nor the consciousness, nor the strength to do what God told you to do and keep doing it. The Bible said it is of the evil one. Even these callings that people have answered without the spirit of the Holy Ghost, did not God call all of his apostles? And none of them had the spirit of the Holy Ghost when he called them. Don't tell me people are not being called. And that's why it looks like God. But they don't have the power that they need to be like God. They called. My daddy was called. He was a pastor. Almost got the baptism in Jesus' name. Not quite. Did not have the Holy Spirit in the infilling. But I loved him to pieces. Hallelujah. That was my dad. Good man. But I'm saying to you, according to the word of God, even when you have a calling, God called all of his apostles, uh, Andrew, Peter and Andrew, James and John. He called them. And then they all had to go to the upper room, be filled with God's Holy Spirit, and then when they were, they all came out baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus, baptizing in water. So there you go. So yes, there are people out there and I respect them because I know that they're called by God. However, an unbeliever, a person that, okay, like the disciples were, uh, that Paul met in the uh, upper coast of Ephesus, Acts 19 chapter, first verse, for one through four actually. They were called. They were John's disciples. They, Paul said, since you believed, well, have you received the Holy Ghost? And they were like, we haven't even heard about that. Paul said, well, unto what were you baptized? See, water and spirit. They were believing. So were those that Jesus called. Peter and Andrew. James and John. They believed enough to go with Jesus. Go with him. But they had to be saved. So there you go. Then after you are saved, the Bible says you cannot swear 
by anything. You cannot make these vows to God that you're going to do it. Listen, let's, let's get up. Let's wash ourselves in the blood of Jesus. Uh, I don't mean wash ourselves because we can't do that either. Call for the blood from the king. Mm -hmm. After you're saved, call and ask God to purify that heart. And say, God, this heart can't do nothing without you. This body, this mind needs your grace. That's how we are saved by grace. We're not saved by grace before we get saved. Mm -mm. No, we're not. It's after. The Bible says, Acts 1 and 8, after you have received the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. That's why you feel powerless. Glory to God. You need the Holy Ghost. But God is a good God. And when the Holy Ghost comes, it will speak just like it's been doing forever. He said, I and my father are one, St. John 10 and 30. And from the very beginning, God started talking. He started speaking. And God said, let. Genesis. Let there be. Let there be. He kept talking. He's always been a talking God. And these people that are saying, I've asked people, I said, well, what did God say to you? And they said, nothing, I can't hear him. I was like, oops, problem. You can't hear God? He talks, he talks, he talks. That's how I got into trouble over 39, 40 years ago. Didn't know that God could talk, would talk to me. Would talk, period. I thought everything was in, in the Bible. But he does talk. Yes, he does. And he was talking to me at the time. But I didn't know that was God. And that's the problem. A lot of people don't know that he's talking to them. But he's talking. He's speaking. So, here's the word of God to give us that foundation. He said, let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay. Your yes be yes, and your no be no. Some of us were a little overzealous. I'm going to say that. I put myself in that class. I can be. Oh, God, I'm going to fast. And I'm going to fast 30, 40 days. Mm-hmm. I'm not telling a soul. There's a difference between a fast and a food discipline. Okay. Yes. Because God has shown, God gave me a food discipline once. And I thought, you know, because for years, uh, fasting is no food, no water. Well, as I got older, God changed the great. As I got older, then God began to let me drink water on the fast. And that was acceptable to him. I really couldn't do it. I would get, I really couldn't do what I used to do. Was the grace of God any less? No. The grace of God was intelligent. <laughs> he wasn't foolish. And he was like, this woman's body is older. So he allowed me to drink water on the fast. Now, there's some days that I can do things without water, and some days I can't. Got to have some water. So here we are, years later. And the Lord speaks to me, and he said, I don't want you to eat this. I want you to eat that. And I was like, oh, God, what are you doing? I, I don't eat on a fast. I didn't know what he was doing. But then. It came in the Old Testament. He did tell them about there were things that he didn't want them to eat. And at that time, it was unlawful. Now we can pray over our food and eat whatever. But because of my body, the intelligent Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God said, right now, I don't want you to eat this, but you should eat that. 
you know, come away from that. You can have a little bit of this on a day that I've set aside for you to have it. And he explained all that to me. Yeah, he talked. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try that. But now he did incorporate a fast within the food discipline. I was like, wow. Okay, God. Where there was no water and there was no food. But then when I came off of the fast, it was eat this, don't eat that. You can have this on a certain day. That's the way it went. And that's what he did for me. Okay, because he's a personal God. And he knew, he knows what he's called me to do. I'm not saying this is for you, especially at uh, the age that I'm at. If you're up here with the seniors, you've got to be led with that kind of stuff because your body is very human and very much of this world. So it, 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 it will die. <laughs> uh-huh. So you got to, you got to treat it right. So God knows. But I didn't intend for this to be that long, but I wanted God to just have his way. And I acknowledged him. I can't do anything without him. So I'm glad for you to have attended, to get an understanding. Stop saying yes. Or stop saying, God, I'm going to do this. And then don't do it. Now, like I said, if God calls you to a thing, and you don't do it. You don't say yes to the Lord. He has a way. Trust me, I know. Of making sure he moves you right into what his will is for you. And you're going to do it whether you said yes or no. At some point, you're going to do it. Are you going to always have a lot of problems? So there you go. But now, don't be saying to God on your own. You know what, God? I think I'm going to just take a... I'm not going to eat a drink for three days and three, three nights. And he didn't tell you to do that. That comes from the evil one. Even the fasting... Yeah! What? And we have heard that there are people out there who are witches and warlocks. They fast and they pray. But to who? Comes from the evil one. Now we got churches who do things that is of the evil one. Churches. And I'm not talking about fasting and praying. I'm talking about some other things. I've been around for a long time. Hallelujah. I've seen a whole lot. Glory to God. But we're saved by grace. And we have mercy. And often as God has told me and explained to me. That you, you know, he sends the word. It's not to destroy them. Although they think that you are coming against them. It's to build them up. So. Time to change. Time to do it God's way. Not like the world. We're not like the world. If the world is doing it, that ought to be enough for you to say, mm -mm. <laughs> something is from the evil one. Mm -hmm. So I know it's hard to believe that, you know, Kind of, I can see where, you know, people say, well, you know what? I'm celebrating Christmas. Well, you need to go back and, and the world is like acknowledging baby Jesus. Some of them are. Most of them are not. It's idolatry. And the commercial world loves it because it's mercenary. They get to profit off of it. So they say, yeah, 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 let's push it. But if you go back and you research 
Research your Halloweens. Research your Christmases. See where they came from. The evil one. Yep. Not from Jesus. So praise God. As a matter of fact, in the word of God, Jesus said, Jesus celebrated his death. If we're going to use him for an, an example, he did not celebrate the birth coming into the world. He didn't celebrate it. The wise men brought him gifts. Mm -hmm. I never see another place in the scriptures where Jesus' birth was celebrated. Now, we happy about being born. We celebrate our birthdays. Yes, we do. Do we think that's okay with God? I, I think so. Now, this is me speaking. Okay. We're happy to be born and people bring you gifts. Uh, I can see where that's, uh, you know, scriptural, script, uh, precepted by the scripture. But Jesus said, celebrate my, my death. That's how we take communion. That's like, whoa. The ultimate. Because if he had been born and didn't die, we would still be in our sin. Because there would be no bloodshed. So here, thank you so much. I've gone over time. 31 minutes out of your day. I appreciate you. I want to say thank you. And thank you for listening to the end. That's a whole half an hour of your life. Thank you for subscribing. May God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. And I pray that this blesses your soul.